Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. There's another video shared with me by one of my viewers that um, I want you all to take a look at. Um, it's pretty much what we have been seeing here in this country just over and over again. Uh, none of these stories come as a big surprise to us anymore, but I want to share it with you nonetheless because uh, this is a story that has literally gone viral and has made the news nationwide, and that is because of the ridiculousness of this situation. I'm going to go ahead and roll the video, and I will be right back. Tonight, an exclusive from the ABC 15 investigators. You're about to hear from the Arizona man whose traffic stop made national headlines. So you stopped me from my car person? Yes, sir. On a cell phone, Philip Colbert recorded how he was stopped by a deputy, ordered out of his car and questioned repeatedly, all because of an air freshener. He believes it was profiling, and so do his attorneys. They tell ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoving they are working to expose more about what happened and the deputy involved. Like I said, he stopped me. I see before. It's mid-morning, September 19th, and Phil Colbert doesn't know why he's been stopped. Morning, sir. How you doing, man? You got your license, registration, insurance? Yes, sir. Okay, any weapons in the car? Nope. Okay. Can I get it from my glove box? Yeah, please. Can I ask you why you stopped me? So you can't have anything hanging from your rear view mirror. So you stopped me from my uh, car air freshener? Yes, sir. Air freshener. The, the little tree. The little tree in my window. Yes, the air freshener. Colbert says the La Paz County Sheriff deputy had been following his silver Chrysler for a while. So I'm actually driving from work and I'm actually going to see my dad in Parker. So I work in Havasu. Um, I'm actually going to see my dad. And that's when it all happened. How long was he following you for? About 10 to 15 minutes. And so you're just waiting, waiting for him to pull you over. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. So that's why you start the phone, because you know he's just waiting. Yep. Almost immediately, as Colbert reaches for his documents, the deputy starts questioning him about drugs. Got my cards in there. Okay, any marijuana in the car? Nope. Okay. You smoke marijuana? No. And he asks again, and again, and again. Mr. Colbert, when's the last time you did smoke marijuana? I never smoked. I never? just said that. Okay. Unsatisfied, the deputy eventually tells him to step out. Mr. Colbert, you said there's no weapons in the car? Nope. Okay, do me a favor. Relax, man. You're still 10 and 2. It's just what I learned growing up. So my mom and dad always taught me to keep it hands 10 and 2, stay as calm as possible. So if you don't mind, this is just, this is why I'm relaxed at. Okay. Can I have you hop out? I just have a couple more questions for you, and I want to speak to you man to man, so that way you're not doing this, and I'm leaned over. Can I take my fast my seatbelt? Yeah, dude. When he stepped me out the car, then I was kind of weary about the situation where it was going. Out of the car, Tree. the deputy starts to accuse Colbert of not being honest. Like I said, you're, you're showing me signs of deception, and I'd rather you just be up front with me, man. If you got a joint, I don't... I'll smoke. Okay. How many times do you think he asked you about the marijuana? Over 10 times. He's simply unwilling to believe him. So there's no marijuana or anything like that in the car you know about? No cocaine? No. No heroin? No. Okay. Um, did you have any objection to me searching your car, man? Yes. And why did Colbert object? Because I'm like, you know, maybe as soon as he checked the car, he's going to try to put some in there. Maybe, you know, he's going to try to say I failed. Um, you mind doing some field sobriety tests? Make sure you're okay to drive, man. Are you serious, yeah. man? This is crazy. Wow. This is so crazy. the reason I want to put you through sobriety tests is your mm -hmm. eyes kind of look a little bit glossy. Really? And some people just have that, that glossiness. Okay? That's, that's why we do these tests to determine. What's your name, man? Yeah, sorry, E-Max. E-Max, short for Eli Max. A deputy with six years experience already with his third department. I have never heard of an officer pulling someone over for an air freshener. Do you think this is profiling? I think so. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Civil rights attorney Benjamin Taylor is one of the lawyers representing Colbert. They're considering a lawsuit. We're going to be looking at the officer's past to see whether or not he has a history of doing this. The cell phone video does raise questions. I ask everybody for every single time I stop. I, dude, I do this on every traffic stop. You take everybody out on every traffic yes, stop? Yes, sir. This is me doing my job. I ask this question on every single traffic stop I do. And I'm not trying to treat you any differently than anybody else I've ever come across. So what do you want to see happen? So I basically just want the next guy to not have to deal with this. When I posted it, I explained to everybody this is not a vendetta. I'm not 
I don't have all this hate in me. I'm mad because, you know, this is something that's a reoccurring issue. So I'm still standing here. During the stop, Colbert says after 10 minutes of questioning, the deputy made him wait another 10 to 15 minutes while he checked his information. Now he's doing whatever in his backseat. Finding nothing. In the end, the deputy finally sends him off with nothing but a warning. And this final thought. I am going to give you a warning today, okay? Um, but maybe in the future, just like I said, man, if you got to join, I don't we're, we're not looking for a joint. Okay. Thanks. Drive safe, all right? Yep. I'm Investigator Dave Biscobing, ABC 15, Arizona. And just tonight, the La Paz County Sheriff's Office sent us a statement saying they are taking this matter seriously. Deputy Max is now on administrative leave and detectives are investigating. Now, as you see with this encounter, it was very frustrating to watch. This young man is very clearly uh, very respectful. Um, he isn't thuggish. Not that that matters when it comes to police encounters. It shouldn't matter because I just saw a video where uh, there was a white guy who had an encounter with the police where he was just literally charging at him. How many times have we seen that? And they are backing away from him because they don't perceive him as a threat, even though he has a weapon in his hand. But anyway, the young man in this situation, you saw how very polite he was, how professional he was, how calm he was. And it wasn't until a little later in the encounter that he literally started to ask questions, but very calmly. So we have these people who are antagonizing our men, women, and children. They want you to remain calm while they are nervous and afraid of the encounter to the point where they are taking lives. But with all of this information in our heads, they expect you still to remain calm while they're not remaining calm. They escalate situations and they are supposed to be trained to de-escalate. But again, I need you all to understand, I need my people to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places, against principalities and powers. You see, there is more going on than what we see. Many of us, we are just so one-sided, one-dimensional with our thinking that we're thinking, oh, they're just being this way towards us. They're treating us this way or they're treating us that way. You have to understand that there are powers of darkness behind all of these actions. And these are the things that we need to know and understand and learn how to get to the bottom of these things because all of the stuff that we're doing, none of it has worked. None of it is working. You see, the, thing, the things that will work, we don't want to do those things. The first thing is to believe that these things are not happening by chance. These are a curse that have been spoken over us and placed on us as a people. Now, individually, these curses can be broken, but you have to understand that there is a system at work here. And this system is in full operation because of things that we won't do as a people. I definitely wish some of you, especially those of you who are new to this channel, please take a look at the Whited Out documentary series. That will help you to understand so much, especially part one and five, the curse of generational curses is part five. Part one basically tells you all you need to know about our history, how we ended up here and why we are in the condition that we're in. But the whole series just takes it from point A to the point that we are, we are now. We're nowhere near point Z because there is so much more information to be told, so much more to be shared about why we are not in our right state of mind as a people. But in this situation, again, back to the young man, you have to understand that there are powers of darkness that are operating in these people that are dealing with us on this level. This making national news is showing you that people are like, they're looking at the situation, regardless to why these things are happening, they're looking at the situation and they're saying, look, this is just over the top. Pulled over for an air freshener. And to antagonize this young man and just con continue to poke and poke and poke and accuse him of having drugs, literally. I mean, he's basically accusing him. He's asked him how many times, almost a dozen times, 
if he had some type of drugs on him. Asking him almost a dozen times, do you have marijuana? Do you smoke it? When was the last time you smoked it? He said, look, I don't have it. I don't smoke it. I don't use it. But these are the types of things that these people have been stirred up in their minds to do because they are reprobate. This is why they operate and do the things that, that, that they are doing to our people. But the thing that we need to understand is why they have been unleashed on us in this way. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see, people. You can deny all you want and say that um, it's not what it is. You can think that at some point we're just going to, um, of our own strength, rise in power and just deal with this stuff on our own. For the past 400 years, we've been under the rulership of these people. And people are always talking about what they're going to do. And as I've said many times, outgunned and outnumbered. You need to make more sense than what you're making. Now, the Most High himself, it doesn't matter with him. It could be one to chase a thousand or two to chase ten thousand. But when we are in a state of disobedience and error, he's going to continue to have his back turned against us and his face set against us. That's what I need you to understand, family. This is why these things continue to occur. We continue to talk about them, but the solution will always be to repent. Whether you like it or not, the truth will always be. And that is all I have for you is the truth. And I just want my people to know and understand. I know things are frustrating. I know that we're getting very tired of these things. But all we can do is say that we're tired. There is no rising in your own power. No such thing. Anyways, I am done with this video. And with that, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel. And also, comment, share, like, and subscribe.